Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Rudder Lessons. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. So we're about to enter the summer and I know that that's time for us to bust out our aquatic scents, our blue scents, our freshies, our citrus offerings for the summer. So in this video, I'm gonna be ranking 10 blue fragrances that I have in my collection all the way up to my favorites. So make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin this video and I tell you about 10 blue fragrances that I have in my collection and I try to rank them all the way up to my favorite, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you like fragrance reviews or top 10 lists just like this, but also giveaways, unboxings, special guests and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner, it would mean so much to me. And of course, leave a like down below for the YouTube algorithm, that would mean a lot. So these are 10 blue fragrances that I have in my collection. Some of them are new acquisitions, some of them I've had for years and years. Some of them even have blue in the name of the fragrance, and so that's kind of a dead giveaway. But the bottom line is that when you think of blue scents, you think of scents that are typically on the fresher side, especially if blue is a designation in the name of a flanker. It's a fragrance that is a lighter, fresher, more aquatic and ozonic offering of the original. So these are all fresh, citrusy, aquatic. They have these blue elements, whether they be Ambroxan or Sauvage or um, like Dior Sauvage, um, Iso Isu, Super, k -Lone, a lot of these fresh ingredients. Uh, Sauvage is actually not in this list, but I may do a part two of just ranking 10 other blue scents in my collection. If you'd like to see that, leave a comment down below. I'm surprised that it includes Sauvage, but in any case, let's go ahead and start this list. And the fragrance in the number 10 spot, I actually put in the number 10 spot because it doesn't really work too well off of my skin. I know it's a very popular fragrance in the community and it's Bulgari Aqua. So this of course goes back many years and you have that salty seaweed note in here with that, uh, the contrast of the fresh and clean orange. And perhaps it's that salty nuance and maybe some experiences that I've had wearing it in the past that make me not so crazy about it. And so it's really not one of my favorite fragrances. I know there's also Aqua Amara and there's also Aqua Atlantique. I do like those a little bit better. And I think there's also an intense or an extreme version. That one was actually pretty good too. I almost purchased that one, but I did a review on this one and I wasn't so crazy about it. Not because I find it to be a bad composition, but it just didn't work really well off of my skin. The next fragrance that I want to talk about is a new acquisition and this one does have blue in the name and this is Mont Blanc Explorer Ultra Blue. So this was effectively a blind buy. I had no idea what it smelled like. I know what the original Explorer smells like because I own it. But in the case of this fragrance, it comes across very fresh, very citrusy, uh, very clean, perfect office type of a fragrance. I can see somebody getting compliments with this one, perhaps not as many as they would get with like the regular Explorer, the original, uh, but this one at times kind of reminded me of like Azaro's Chrome or many flankers of Chrome. And so I do need to spend a little bit more time with it before I you know, position myself in front of the camera and give you my comprehensive thoughts on this one in the form of a review. So I'll probably put this back on the shelf for a little bit, maybe wear it a few more times and hopefully I'll get a chance to review it for you within the next week or two. The next fragrance is also a 2021 release, also has blue in the name, and I actually like this one a lot. It's a little polarizing, but this one by Dolce & Gabbana is called Light Blue Forever. It has this really tart and slightly herbal grapefruit note in the opening, and it smells quite realistic in my opinion. The best grapefruit that I encountered in a designer fragrance since Coach Leatherwear, which unfortunately is now discontinued, but this is awesome. I love that grapefruit in the opening. It has this herbal quality and it does evolve into something different very quickly. And so I suppose a lot of people's gripe with it is the fact that it's so non-linear and it evolves so quickly and so dramatically. But in any case, I like this one. My wife loves it as well. It's a great freshie. And then of course, we have to put some respect on this next fragrance in the list, Nautica Voyage. I mean, look at how blue the juice is, right? This is kind of the epitome 
of a blue fragrance, especially considering its inexpensive nature. This can be had for like under 20 bucks. I'm gonna leave a link down below. Awesome fragrance composed by Maurice Roussel. I know a lot of people say it smells like dryer sheets. It's very clean, floral. It has this blue, very mildly fruity quality to it as well, but it just comes across smelling very, very clean. And I have both versions. Uh, the one with the plastic cap is the new version, but I have the original with the metal cap as well. And the differences in the smell are negligible. I love this one. And again, so does my wife. I think my wife pretty much loves every single fragrance in this list. The next fragrance, Acudigio Profondo. All right, so this is the newest, well, the newest is Profondo Lights, which I also have on the way. I'm gonna be getting that one very soon. But with Profondo, you have this bright, citrusy, clean white floral fragrance with a touch of mastic oil in there to sort of give it this exotic, unconventional, resinous feel. And I would say that this is probably a better fit for you than the original Aqua Dijo composed by Alberto Morias because that came out in the mid 90s. And so it's been around for such a long time now, so many people wear it. And then of course, Profumo isn't quite the blue fragrance that Profondo is. And so if you're looking for something very fresh, clean, appealing, perfect for the office. This one is great. And yeah, I think I do enjoy this one more than all of those other fragrances, just because of its versatility. I do find this one to be a little bit on the quirky side. I think this one is also quite common as well. And this one, I guess, you know, the comparison to uh, Atado's Chrome, but this one is awesome. I'm really enjoying this one. So the next fragrance is also a little bit of an unconventional blue scent, can also be worn to the office, but it has melanin here. It has some fruiting nuances. It has lavender as well on top of those blue oceanic components. And I put this one in this list because the name of the fragrance is blue. <laughs> so this one by Michael Malul, part of the Katorit line is called blue. So this one fruity with that melon in the opening, it's heavily citrus, if that's even a word citrus. Uh, it has a lot of citrus in here, the lavender, but it also has like this patchouli and amber thing going on in the base as well. And so it's a pretty complex fragrance for a blue fragrance, but it still has that freshness that we often look for from a blue fragrance. So I really appreciate this one and I'm enjoying this one. I'm going to be wearing this one a lot now that it's starting to get warmer outside. It's quite rainy and gloomy today, but once I get a little, bo little bit more of that warmth that I'm really desperately expecting from the summer, I'm going to be wearing this one a lot. The next fragrance on this list also has blue in the name, Versace Porom Dylan Blue. So this one is, and I think that's the reason why Sauvage is not in this list because I'm including this one. This one is often perceived by people to be like a less harsh version of Dior Sauvage. And that's because it contains a lot of the same ingredients. So it has the Ambroxan, it has the black pepper, it has the bergamot, it has a lot of the citrus, and the smell is a little comparable. This one doesn't have that bright opening that Sauvage has that some people say can come across smelling a little metallic. This one, on the other hand, is smooth, very well groomed, like a very well polished gentleman, you know, wearing a shirt and tie or suit and tie. It just comes across smelling very professional, very elegant. And then, of course, if we're talking about blue fragrances, we have to go back to the originator, and that is the original Versace Porom also composed by Alberto Morias, as are some of the other ones in this list, I'm sure. And this one is more blue than Dylan Blue, right? So despite, despite the fact that this one actually has blue in the name, this one is the bluer version, if you think about it, because this is more on the side of floral and aquatic and citrusy. And you do actually pick up on a little bit of that Ambroxan Kalone vibe that's in here, more Kalone than anything, putting it in this aquatic territory. But this one also smells fresh out the shower. You can never go wrong wearing the original Versace Porom. And speaking of blue colored bottles and some of my favorite aquatic fragrances of all time, um, Versace is actually doing quite well in this list, surprisingly, because the next one is Versace Man O Fresh. And this one was composed by Olivier Cresp, who has also done Sedley by Parfum de Marly. He's done the um, original 
Angel by Teddy Mugler from the early 90s. He also did uh, the women's version of Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana, among many, many other fragrances. And this one has this unusual note of star fruit, otherwise known as carambola. So it's citrusy, it's fresh, it's clean, but it also has this unconventional fruity accent to it. In many ways, quite similar to the Michael Malul, where it's also citrusy but fruity at the same time. And so I personally love this one. I know a lot of people say it's kind of like the designer version of Bergamot 22 by Le Labo which also happens to be one of my favorite fragrances. It's my holy grail bergamot scent, but this one is awesome. And of course, if we're talking about blue fragrances, if we're gonna make a blue list, no list is complete without blue de Chanel. And this is the fragrance that I'm putting in the number one spot. I have had this fragrance for so many years now. It has served me so well. This is not my first bottle of it. I always wear this one to work. I'm a teacher, so it comes across smelling very professional in that sort of white collar setting. You, you know, wearing a shirt and a tie. You wanna convey this aura of professionalism and uh, Blue de Chanel with the grapefruit and the incense and uh, the ginger some of the spicier elements that are in there, but it's also so fresh. And honestly, if you are looking for the number one most versatile fragrance, I can't think of a better option than Blue de Chanel. It just has so much going for it. It works well in so many uh, seasons and occasions. The number one office fragrance in my opinion. Of course, Dylan Blue is also fantastic. Sauvage Parfum is also good in an office setting, but there's just something about Blue de Chanel. The Eau de Toilette, by the way, that I absolutely love. It's diffusiveness, how volatile it is, the freshness that comes with it. Anyway, my number one pick, but all of these are good if you are into these types of fragrances and these types of notes, even something like Bulgari Aqua, where I wasn't a fan of that salty seaweed vibe that's in there you might really enjoy that one. And so, you know, that's why I always recommend that you go out there, you sample these fragrances for yourself, and I hope you enjoy them. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate your viewership today. If you took something of value from this video, these top 10 blue fragrances ranked in my collection, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Again, all you have to do is click on that red button down below, and also make sure to like this video if you liked it. It would greatly assist with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.